Hello everyone. Welcome. I see some usuals in here. Apologize for late start and I'm out of breath. I just had to run up from my house or run down from my house. Just a quick look. I have a lot to cover tonight and it's going to be kind of haphazard because I'm doing some of this on my phone. Turns out I forgot how to use Windows. It's been so long since I did a live stream. It's having to refigure out this software. Do you hear the fireworks? Oh, by the way, I have a new moderator. They're going to be moderating under the Kev Central moderator account sitting right beside me. So if you see Kev Central moderating, it's actually not me, it's someone else. So give them a hi or a thumbs up if you don't mind. But I'm going to be jumping around tonight. Let's see who's here really quick. JM Click, hello to you. Sonic Crash. Raider Z25, Raiders 25. Steven Youngstrom, I don't remember your name before. Hello to you. Welcome to the live stream here at Kev Central. AZ Mountain Bike Beast, hello to you. Hey, there's another Kevin. You have a quality name. Quality name. I hope you guys can hear me okay. So I'm just going to glance through here. As always, I go back and I look at all of this live stream chat. Mongoose. Yeah, you know, it's actually Mongoose. Mongooses. When you and not Mongoose, I think it seems like I looked that up once. I was wondering if it was mongoose or manga. Maybe it was manga. I can't remember. Somebody look it up. Let me know. So, hey, and there's Paradox. Mr. Boss, hello to you. Did you hear the fireworks? He, I think you he heard the boom. Or he or she heard the boom. Evan Foreman, there's a name. I know Kenny Graves. Zero crap. Paul Maloney. Welcome, new moderator. That's uh, Paul Maloney, a, a patron, I believe. So it looks like we've got our usual crew here. And El Alex Garcia, hello to you. Here's my topics tonight. So I think you're gonna find some of this info interesting. Uh, I'm gonna ask, obviously, about the two bikes around me here, the Ardor and the partially concealed stage two in the works version of the ledge. So comment, I'm curious, how many of you are team Ardor, which there, nope, there, this backwards, people always talking about that. How many of you are Team Ardor? How many are Team Ledge? Comment with that, or maybe, could be that you are Team, I missed out. If your team missed out, maybe do a frowny face or something, because you couldn't get them in stock. That was the most rapid sellout I think I've ever seen. I mean, I've known for a while, though. Talk about things here on Kev Central, and they seem to go quick. But that was record-breaking. I literally... Uploaded the video, went out to the mountain bike trail. I was out at the mountain bike trail for about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. And I came back and it was sold out. Couldn't believe. That was on the Ardor, I think. No, that was the ledge. That was the ledge video. Where I just left, I came back and I thought, well, everything should be getting settled in here. And then, whoa, sold out. Sold out. But I was told they had more inventory coming. And I think maybe that hit and sold out. So we'll see, but I suspect. These are pretty revolutionary, as you've seen, so I suspect there will be a good flow of those. But I'm going to talk about those. I'm also going to talk about this. I don't have the links because I'm having a problem with this Windows box. But obviously, uh, Mongoose, you know, Mongoose has a blog. And if you head over to mongoose.com and you click, you can scroll down or you can just click on blog. But you'll scroll down. There's actually a guest blog by me on the Mongoose website, talking about things to look for in an affordable bike, budget bike, things to look for. So I thought that was nice. I was able to get a blog on there. So go by and check that out if you get a chance. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. But also, I'm going to do the Ardor Ledge Q&A. Now, I made that community post, and if you, <laughs> more fireworks. If you guys don't know what the community, community posts are, if you go to Kev's, not Kev Central, if you go to YouTube, my YouTube channel, up at the top, you'll see recent video, videos, and community is one of the tabs. If you click on community, you'll be able to see community posts. Not a lot of people know about that. Some people get the notification and then go, and there's no new video. What's up? Why am I getting a notification? There's no new video. It's actually maybe a community post. So you can check out there. I do posts and things like that. But I did a question and answer for the ledge and the ardor. Of course, many of those questions have been answered by the follow-up videos that I've made on these thus far. We'll, we'll talk more about that. And also, I want to talk about 
kind of the feature rundown with the Ledge X1 and the Ardor X1 and maybe what else that means. If that makes any sense. We'll find out about that. And then I'm gonna give away a bike. If you are savvy and a regular viewer of Kev Central, you know that I have the Instagram account, official Kev Central. And on that Instagram account, I was giving away, I gave away, let's see, what did I give away? I forgot the first bike. This would be the second. The first bike was the aluminum comp, the 2020 aluminum comp. Second bike is the M bar. So you could go and register for that. Of course, too late now. If you haven't done it already, but I'm going to give away and I'm going to let you guys choose. I'm going to let you guys choose who that goes to. That was a, uh, that was a fork for either an Axum or a Lit. I don't know which one. <laughs> it was one of the two. One of the two. But I have, just to show you guys how I've done this, I have listed all of the names of everybody that qualified. Wow. Can't turn the pages here. Listed all of the names on two sheets and I've numbered them. And I'm going to let you guys randomly pick a number, but we'll, we'll get to that. So first on my list here, let me scroll and see somebody. There's a, an Ardor order. Somebody is Team Ardor and Team Hydroform. Looks like you are <laughs> Simrig PC27B. Team Ardor, Ardor, lots of Ardor love here. You know, it's kind of funny. Those bikes, I received the bikes early. And I was able to give them a look, but I didn't have enough time to get everything I needed for videos because you'd be surprised how much time and effort it takes to put together a video that's well edited. I'm trying to present things the way I see them. So to put that together it takes a little bit of time. And plus, I'm really trying to give a bike a shakedown, not just look at it. I'm trying to find out kind of what it has in a crunched amount of time. So I can make a pretty good observation on it. And I've got enough experience that I'm decently good at that. But I made a bet. I saw the Ardor and then I saw the Ledge when I unboxed them. And the Ledge was where my attention went. And I like the Ardor. I definitely like the Ardor. But the Ledge kind of drew me in because I kind of got that next generation XR Pro vibe is what I sensed in that. So I spent more time focusing on the Ardor. So my ledge project bike is actually coming second. I've started working on it, as you can see. I've got it stripped down a bit. So that will be coming within hopefully the next week. We've got a lot of rain coming up, but finally I think the humidity is dropping, so that'll be good. But it's interesting about these two bikes, just how much compassion or not compassion how much passion there is for these two bikes i mean these have really set off a lot of conversation especially with the ardor with that that head tube angle obviously the 66.5 degree head tube angle who would have thought that we i would have lost that bet if this were a betting case i would have lost that bet if you would have been me, oh, are we ever going to see a head tube angle slacker than 67 degrees on a big box bike within the next year or so? Oh, I would have doubled down money wise that there was no way that that was going to happen. And here it is. So, so there's that. And it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, too. So, how many of you are, are over there? Oh, I'm getting to some ledges now. I see Paul Mark Orev, Team Ledge, Paul Maloney of fellow ledger. I'm, I'm team ledge. I'm team ledge, I'll admit. But I do also like the ardor, so it's kind of hard. You know, they're, they're kind of their own aspect because you have the hardtail versus the full suspension. So definitely room for each. But I'm putting more money into the ledge. I will tell you that with my upgrades. An, an odd amount of money for me to invest in a bike with the ledge there's rome clasher see so missed out so i see some i see some frowny faces and some cryy faces that you guys missed out well you know don't worry don't worry i'm sure there'll be more i mean these are big box big box mean big volume typically with bikes so let me move on to something here that i'm gonna have to use my phone for i am going to have to go manually to because I can't I got this Let's see where is it at 
I doubt. Is that slideshow been up there at the end time? Or that? Can you guys even see the giveaway screen? Because I can't. Let's try this slideshow. These are the questions that you guys ask about the ledge and the arter. So what I want to do, I'm just going to go to my website. And I can't see this because it's too small. I'm, well, it looks big there, right? I can't see this because it's too small on my screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to my channel. And I'm going to look at the post itself here. And I'm going to run down them real fast. And I'm just going to let that cycle. So anyone that did comment can get a little bit of screen time there. Let me get to this. Where is it? There it is. Question and answer. So I'm just going to run down this list here. Starting with Simrig, our buddy right here in our live stream. Uh, Simrig PC27B wanted to know about the bearings. I'm going to skip over every question about them because we know now that it is bearings. It is not plastic bushings. It is bearings. So we do know that. Uh, Jason Knoll wanted to know about frame weight since it's fully apart. And I'm assuming that he meant the arter. I don't know. It didn't specify which bike. Did I put a thumbnail image on that? I think I might have had the ledge on the thumbnail. Well, I can tell you, I stripped them both down. The ledge weighs, I believe it was 7.1 pounds. Stripped down without the seat post on it. That was still with the derailleur hanger and the headset cups in it. it was 7.1 pounds. The Ardor was right at 4 pounds, just a little bit above 4 pounds, if I remember correctly. Stripped down. So not bad for an aluminum frame bike. Not bad at all. Are you going to build this as all mountain? There's a buddy Thio. Uh, all mountain specs. Well, you'll see. You'll see what I end up with on on these. And I, I see mountain bike Keo here. That was a buddy that helped me learn about the headset. And that's why uh, he actually took the headset off before I got to it. Because I doubled down on the ledge. Let's see. Ethan Mayo. Could you overstroke the shock and add a bit of travel? Okay, let me let me do this. Here is the replacement shock, the non-factory. This was what you saw in stage one. It's already off the bike. What's covered there is just an empty hole where the shock is. But I have two other sizes of shock for this bike. And I'll kind of reveal what happens when I put those different shocks on in those videos. But let me just tell you. You really change the geometry on a full suspension bike if you're getting a longer shock and putting that on the bike because the bike is going to flex in weird ways. Or actually, it flexes like this. Uh, it's going to flex in weird ways because of the longer shock stroke. So you have to factor that in. And that can do a lot, not just the head tube angle, but that can change ride geometry in a big way when it's squeezing together on you in its base form. So you have to be careful with that. But I will discuss that kind of in depth in a video. Where's my phone? There's my phone. I'll discuss that in depth when I get into the other shots in the video. And I apologize that I'm not running over. There we go, 4.52 pounds. Uh, I got a little bit less than that, Kia, when I weighed mine. So I don't know. Yeah, I got a, a bit less than that when I weighed mine. Still over four pounds, but not much over. Just ordered the ledge. This is Al Santiago. Just ordered the ledge. We have to change the rear wheel to quick release. What is the spacing on the rear wheel? Spacing on the ledge, 135. Spacing on the Arter, also 135, but it's actually 138 the way mine specs out. I don't know if that's all of them, but 135. Quick release for that. Ulysses Del Toro is the wheelbase longer than the Ardor coming out. He's talking about the ledge. I'm trying to remember those specs. I have, you know, I've done that on two videos. What's those videos? I want to say that the ledge is longer, but I can't remember. I think it was 1196, 1196 millimeters versus 1200. I think 1202 is, is what's in my head, but I could be a little wrong on that. But I think the ledge was a little longer, wheelbase wise. And there's another question about the quick release. Eye to eye. That's another good question here. This is from Alex G. What's the eye to eye 
eye to eye on the factory shock, which is out of my reach on the floor there. Eye to eye on the factory shock. So what's in the chat? Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, eye to eye, and I appreciate you guys being nice. I'm a new moderator. It's relative. So appreciate. And they're not, uh, DIY Solar Energy is not with us tonight. So there's not the, not the pop-ups pop that there usually are there. But eye to eye on the factory shock, 165 millimeters. I've seen people say 160, but it's 165. This is actually the factory, factory setup here. These these pins are out of the factory bike. See how nice and smooth they run. But 165 on the factory shop. So if you're ordering or looking, that's what that is. It's the next question. I want to see. Chris with a Clemson Paul. Forgive the Clemson Paul since Alabama did so well last year. But you, he asks, is there, he really wants to see more ledge content. You're about to see a lot of ledge content, a lot of Arger content, a lot, a lot of a lot. And someone just bought the Arger's their first bike. I want to recommend it for the upgrade. I don't make recommend it, recommendations on upgrades. I can tell you that the first thing that I focus on, especially on bikes like these, is the fork. Because the fork is not that great. Not that great. Better than what we've had sometimes on some previous bikes. But not as good as the Axum fork. Not as bad as your typical, typical big box fork. But still, not anything I would want to ride on the line, uh, ride on the trail at a regular bit. MJS, MJS. I see MJS, MJS coming a lot. I don't know if you are here tonight. But if you are, hello, I saw another patron there just scrolling up. Andrew Singleton, hello to you. New York Luis, hello to you. Some names there. Uh, Dominique Sorrentini, yeah, names that I see regularly. Thank you guys for tuning in. First time in almost a month. But MGS, MGS wants to know, will the ledge fit a 29-inch wheel? That is a 29-inch wheel on the ledge. That is the standard wheel that I used to use in a lot of my upgrades. The WTB rim with the Continental 2.2, 29 by 2.2. And there is, I mean, the tire's moving. I'm moving my finger around and, well, I just stopped it. I've got plenty of room. Top and bottom. So, yes, a 29-inch wheel will fit quite well on the ledge. And maybe, yes, definitely. That will be the subject of a video where you're gonna see me do all kinds of different wheel combinations on these two bikes, especially since I've spent so much money on wheels. You guys are gonna see a video tomorrow, probably early tomorrow. I don't know, should I release the video early? Seems like they do well if I release them early, but I also like to release them around dinner time so that people can get off work and you get a little bite to eat and you kick back and oh, well, there's Kev Central video. So what do you think? Would you rather see it early in the morning or in the evening? Comment because I have taken Project Axome 21 and I've updated my updates. And this one costs quite a bit of money. So tune in for that, definitely. But wheels, I have a lot of wheels. A lot of wheels, a lot of money spending wheels, and you're going to see a lot. A lot will was, including 29 mullet the whole works on the new order and the new ledge. Uh, let's see here. What do we got? I was able to get an order. Can't wait to see your upgrades. This was pre me upgrading, so skip past that. But thank you for your comment. Another on the shock. Another person. It, I'm getting asked this a lot. This is from BJP Productions. He's turning 16. Happy birthday early. And I just bought myself an Arter and I upgraded the fork. Could I hit some mild jumps? Okay. I am personally not an advocate of taking even affordable local bike shop bikes on jumps. As a matter of fact, the local bike shop, we have a, a, bike, a mountain bike team here in my area called the Shoals Mountain Bike. And I think I may be a member of that. I joined something to donate money a while back. And never got a card or anything, but I don't know. But at some point, maybe I'll film some of their stuff. We talked to me about me doing something with them, but then COVID hit. 
all that. You know how I am with the germs. Even though it's normally just me out here, you know I am about, about them germs. But maybe I'll get together with them and do something. But I remember being in the local bike shop one day, and the bike shop manager mentioned there's the youth team. And he coached the youth mountain bike team. And I remember him talking. He said, yeah, a lot of them bought Marlins. And they're coming back just left and right with taco wheels and bottom brackets all messed up, things like that, because they're jumping. Them. And that's kids that don't weigh a lot jumping around on a bike. So, And that's a local bike shop, mountain bike. So think about that. You're getting something made budget-wise, and then even though you add parts to it, unless those are really good parts, and then you got to think about the fact that they weren't really tested to be jump. Jumping's a whole new thing, whole new thing. So I don't advocate jumping, even on modified big box bikes, but that's me, personal choice. If I were going to jump, which you don't see me jumping around a lot, I take a little small hops. But if I were going to jump, I would be spending some big bucks or a very a frame purpose built for that. So I'll just leave it at that and we'll go there. But there's my two cents. I hope that comes in handy for somebody. Hey, here's Erickson Umali. I love the ledge content. Well, thank you. I love making the ledge content. Really fun. I've been pretty stressful the last couple of days. That frame was down the bike shop for two days. Because I don't do internal cable routing through a frame. Turns out I'm very bad at fishing that through when it's not a dedicated channel. And this this frame is that's not a dedicated it's actually lower, but that's not a dedicated channel. It's an opening and it just opens into the frame. There's not like a solid tube in there. So note that if you're gonna be running your own brake cables and shifter cables through there, it's not just plug and play. Push in one side, it comes out the other. It, it gets lost in there. So note that. A lot of questions about the head tube angle. We know now 66.5 and 68 for the head tube angles. A lot of people asking about when these bikes are going to come available. They have been available since about Thursday or so of last week. They just sold out really quick. And when Walmart sells things out, they tend to pull down the list. They don't take it off their site. They just don't make it actively searchable for some reason. So sometimes they do, but a lot of times they don't. I think it has to do with when they expect new inventory. If it's going to be more than a few days, they'll just make it disappear for a little bit. But you can go to any of my videos on the ledge or the ardor and look down in the description. And you can click on a link and you can go. And once you go there, you can click on notify. And it'll notify you when they come back and stop. So note that, and no, I get asked this a lot, I'm not sponsored or paid by Walmart or Mongoose or Schwinn or any other bike company. I don't do that. Although I have been thinking about hanging a sign on the wall that says this space for rent. Let's see, let's see what that gets. So we'll go there. But I think that's the gist of the question and answers. Let me just scroll through until I get to the end. As uh, someone mentioned 1A, someone mentioned uh, down right back behind the bottom bracket, there's a pivot in the ledge. And if you look at it, it's a metal cup with a bolt going through it. And they said that there is actually a nylon spacer in there. And that eventually that nylon spacer will wear out. And they said you can't get them anymore. Well, I beg to differ with that. Because I, that's the spacer that is in the XR Pro in the same pivot. And A, that bike, my Project XR, has been ridden by some people that were well outside of the stated 250 pound weight limit for these bikes. And many, many times doing very stupid things on the bike. Not, not had it easy. I'm, I can't believe that that frame is not scratched up because it has not had an easy life, but somehow it still looks good. The XR Pro, I mean, that's how those are built. That it still looks good, even with some abuse, but. I've never had any problem, any pivot or flexing down there at that, at that joint, or at that pivot point, I should say. And at one point, I got this baggie. I called Mongoose, and I paid $16, and I ordered. They had it was the, I don't know if they called it the pivot kit or the, I think they called it the full suspension kit, something. 
and it was every bushing because you know the uh, xr pro has brass bushings and it was every bushing and bolt because i lost remember your long time viewer you'll know right away i lost that bolt and that's when i called and i ordered and i think it was either 12 or 16 dollars and it came with everything for all the pivots including that and that's when they said that i was like i think i've seen that part that little play because i wondered what it was and then it's like okay i know what this is i haven't had that wear so i guess if you're maybe talking five or ten years then so be it i'll take those odds and they even mentioned you could make pvc part out of somehow and, and go down in there if you can run down to the hardware store and fix a full suspension mountain bike i'm all for that so leave it at, leave it at that and fork here we go anarchy on two wheels excellent name asks going to get a real shock hold on Here we go. We're gonna get a real shock. Well, I don't know what you classify as real, but I will just show that that is something that I'm working on. So I'm stepping up the game just a bit on what I do shocks. But if you're talking about like a Fox Flow 34 or something like that, or 30, you got all kinds of sizes on those now. No, I'm not gonna put a $1,600 shock on one of the bikes because everything that i do on this channel even sometimes when i overstep it a little bit and spend a lot usually that's stretched out over a year so my overall expenditure is only about a hundred dollars per month even on a fully upgraded project bike it's usually where i try to hang I have a realistic budget and not only realistic realistic for me because i mean i'm strained right now just upgrading these two bikes why's that one lower strained right now just trying to upgrade these two bikes financially putting all the parts that i want to put on them because as you'll see uh, there is some money involved in what's coming so they asked that that was anarchy on two wheels and they also asked about the fork being really 100 millimeters of travel and that is an excellent excellent rock shocks uh no not rock shocks they asked about that fork and this is where i'm gonna have to up down here get the one that I knocked over and you know I'm gonna move my good one really quick please lean that against the door please thank you <laughs> don't want to knock over I don't mind when I knock over this factory fort but if I knock over my new one I would be a little upset even though it's gonna get me around on the trail you know I kind of thought if you watch my ledge stage x1 video you know i got that chip in the top that was where i clamped down a camera mount and it moved and i knew i was going to do it but i was like if i can get this shot if i can get this shot didn't even shot looked not too good i think i used maybe a second of a clip of it but it wasn't what i intended but this is the factory for hmm, i have no idea what i did with my tape measure but this is the factory fork out of the either the the ardor or the ledge they're the same fork and this is the same fork basically that's on i think the schwinn ascension and maybe the boundary i think it's roughly the same fork and they're asking about this travel and this is a good thing to talk about because historically well technically fork travel can be from here to here they just measure this area and say you know 100 millimeters that's kind of dodgy hey just got a super chat that is from hmm, why am i not hearing noises that is from josh lobby a regular patron or not yeah you are a patron i think you're a patron i know you bought some there we go now there's my noises Thank you so much for the super chat. I don't have a bike bell to ring for you. I almost, I have a, I have a little light up ducky that I'm gonna put on another bike that you may or may not can see the tip of in, in, this, in the frame here, but it lights up and I, I think if you squeeze it, it might make some noise. I, I looked at that earlier, I thought maybe I should get that out, but I don't have the bike bell. 
So I will have to just thank you. Thank you for that. I appreciate it, really. It means a lot. If you have a question, let me know, and I'll try to jump in and see. And, I, and I'll look in just a second at these. But let's talk about a little bit of meh, a little bit of meh. Hide this for a moment. Because I want to ask you if you think the same way that I do. If you buy a fork, a suspension fork, and it says 100 millimeters of travel, Travel by definition is going from one point to another. Travel. So I would think, however much it can move from its base point to its maximum movement point, would be travel. Not how much stanchion is exposed, right? That's how I view it. Typically, when I have purchased forks, and I hope I didn't miss a super chat before, because I haven't really been watching this and I had that muted. I'll scroll back up if I did. I apologize. But previously, I purchased forks, and however much travel it says is how much I get. I'm starting to notice this thing. And it could have always been there, and I've just never paid attention to it. But I, when I started noticing it was now that we're at the great fork shortage. You know how hard it is to get parts right now. I paid two hundred nine dollars for some brakes, so it is very hard to get parts, budget parts right now. And I started noticing when I was looking for budget forks because there's the Bucklows and the ZTZ and all those little off-name forks that a lot of those are marketed. That matter of fact, I bought one that was marketed as one hundred and twenty millimeters, and I got it in, and it was a hundred, and I know it's a hundred. You just haven't seen, haven't seen that footage yet, but I know it's 100. This is marketed as 100. That's actually 80 millimeters of travel. So to answer your question, MJS, MJS, I believe it was, the order and the ledge, it's 80 millimeters of effective use travel. So I want you to comment. You agree with me? I see Josh does. I think he's agreeing with me that it should be the actual usable travel. And historically, you're buying them with that in mind. At least I have. Now, all of a sudden, not the case. I'm gonna click on this and make sure that Josh didn't answer, didn't ask a question. Just says, hey, Kip. Well, <laughs> hey, hey. So thank you again. I really do appreciate it. All those super chats, you know, it gets closer. I've quit talking about the RV because I was hoping to get an RV sponsor. But so far, that hasn't panned out, but they're kind of like everything else with bikes. You know, with bikes, they can't keep up with demand. Everything they make is sold. Talk to the local bike shop today. The manager of the local bike shop, oh, super nice guy, super nice guy, expedited the ledge thing for me. It was going to be a week. Put me on priority. Got in a day and a half. So very nice, uh, two days, actually. But he said, right now, I'm thinking about... We're working up a trade for some bikes. That's how hard up they are for bikes. He said right now they are pre-selling bikes for late 2022 into 2023. If you can believe that, it's actually true. What I was told. And that's, I, that's the first time I've been in a place. You know, I don't go in a place. I haven't been inside a business since March of last year. How was that? The bike shop picking up some parts and they've been so nice spinning the spinning spoke florence alabama if you need some help you're ever in the area stop by they have been so great with me helping with the channel it's like they're really getting on board with the channel i'm going to show in one of my upcoming I don't know, I keep holding this. i'm going to show in one of my upcoming videos how they're so nice they put a kiff central sticker at their door and I, I, I was just shocked that they put a Kev Central sticker, and I picked up something, and it had Kev Central on it. It wasn't even Kevin, wasn't my full name. It was just Kev Central. That's who it was for. So I thought that was nice. But they, I asked them, I said, wow, you're getting thin out here. It was just three kids' bikes out front. The guy said, you haven't been in here, have you? I was like, no. He said, you wouldn't believe what it's like. So put on my mask. I held my breath, and to give them credit, they didn't laugh in my face. They may have laughed when I left. But they were kind enough to not laugh in my face when I got a big puff of air 
I ran inside. They all went to the other side of the, there were only two in there, but they went to the other side of the room. And I looked, and I was able to film one wall, and I had to run back out, grab a new puff of breath. I think I got another super chat. Another one from Josh. Wow, Josh, that's two. Thank you. I'll get to that in just a second. But I grabbed it, went outside, grabbed some more breath, and finished filming. I think there were about five or six bikes in there. And I opened the door, and I stood way back. I said, hey, how are you staying in business if you don't have bikes to sell? And they said, service and pre-orders. So getting in that pre-order thing, that's going to be the topic of a video coming up. I can see a danger point coming with cycling because just think about it. If you're a business and you find out that you don't have to have inventory to sell it, hmm, hmm, just think about that. Think about that. You could pre-order, sell everything on pre-order status. Have you thought about making a Kev Central mountain bike jersey? You know, I never have thought about that. That is very good. Will you please remind me? To make a Kev Central mountain bike jersey. Yes. Thank you. That is a really good idea, Josh. Thank you. I appreciate that. But think think about this. If we're selling something, if we have some, I have Kev Central. This only the only thing I haven't read. Oh, here we go. Kev Central sticker. And thank you. Hmm, I forgot the name. Someone bought two Kev Central stickers earlier today. But you know, I have these on eBay. You can go to my website and click on shop, and there's shirts and stickers. And see some of the shirts, but. Let's say I have these stickers and there's a shortage, so I start free selling them. Well, if I can consistently make money selling something that I don't have and you're buying it and then I'm ordering it after you buy it and then you have to wait six months or however long to get it. And then when I get it in, I, I do that. Well, what's my motive or what's my motivation? to start stocking said stickers again, if you get what I'm saying. I just see this could be a slippery slope. That's what I'm worried about, that all these businesses are gonna think, well, we'll do that just in time inventory on a delay. Kind of that Apple thing where you're pre-ordering the new iMac a month before it comes in and just do that with everything. I hope that's not what we're getting. I hope, hope that's not what we're getting at. So let me look. Look through. First, I'm going to scroll back up and make sure that I did not miss a super chat. I did not. Okay, good, good, good. Let me just look here at chat. Times to David. What did David say? You're going to break it. Don't knock over the GoPro. Wait, what GoPro? Do I have somebody knocking over a GoPro here? I've missed. I've missed so much of the chat. I apologize. Um, I Oh, did you? Well, then I'll let you tell me the questions. Now, how about this? My moderator has written down questions that she thinks is are good questions. So what do we what do we have? Well, the first one that I wrote down is they're probably out of order. Raiders okay. twenty five says did Walmart remove the order because I can't find them on the screen. Raiders twenty five. No, Walmart did not remove the order. You can go to my video for the order, any of them. I think I have three. You can go to those and look down in the description, click on link, take it right to the Walmart. Some of these may have already been answered okay. in the chat, but I'm not sure. If okay. Questions. Straight A student, by the way, making notes. Tony Hughes says, hey, Kev, your videos are great. I don't know why well, thank you, Mr. Hughes. She wrote that down. I appreciate it. Today I played, it was in Spanish, so I probably can't pronounce it, but I translated it, and it said, when will the bike be on sale? I won't. That is already on. So talking about the ledger, the order. Look at my links in the descriptions on my videos. Okay. Paradox, Mr. Buck. Paradox, Mr. Buck. The Polygon. Cisq. That's good. Sex City. Yes. Good for jump. I jumped off a also a foot bigger ramp than this time, but I want to practice their jumps without RV. Yeah. Yeah. Paradox, you're talking about the Siskiyou. I don't know what Siskiyou you have, but there are different levels. The Siskiyou 5 is still above big box. So, yeah, like the D7, that's a pretty capable bike. That's what you bought. I, I hope so. Matter of fact, uh, one of my local friends here just bought, I think it's a D7. Might be, is there something above that? I don't know. But they told me that they would give me first go at it if I want to film on it. So maybe we'll take a look 
at one of those. So that would be awesome. Thank you. Is that all of them? Oh, uh, there's a few more. Okay. David asks, "Will those come out of, come out with full suspension?" I don't know. I I haven't seen. Remember, we didn't get a new generation. By the way, I don't know if you could hear, but David, someone asked. It, when Schwinn was going to come out with a new full suspension bike. Someone just bought a sticker. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, the Schwinn didn't release any full suspension bikes with the new generation. With the When they did the boundary, the TAF, well, it was the aluminum comp, then the boundary, then the TAF, then the axon. They didn't do anything then. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe, maybe that that mantle for the, mod the modern I could be wrong. And by the way, I found out separate about, you know, Schwinn and Mongoose are sister companies. Pacific Cycle, they're under the Pacific Cycle umbrella. And Pacific has, well, I don't know that Cannondale's under Pacific, but Durrell owns Pacific and Pacific Controls. At the very least, I know Schwinn and Mongoose. I found out those are two completely separate design teams and management teams for those bikes. So one doesn't necessarily work with the other. So it's not like we're getting trickle down stuff here. Maybe they just worked on this different timings. So there you go. And that could potentially explain part of this head tube anomaly, which I'll get to in just a second on the, on the art. And wow, another super chat. We got, hey, and you got a sticker. How's it going? It's going pretty good. <laughs> Thank you, Carlos Barraza. Thank you. I really appreciate that. I like your Star Wars your stuff. There's another sticker. Wow, all you guys are getting. You know, and I will do this. I will do this. If you buy $10 worth of stickers, I will, I have some custom padded envelopes made for selling keychains and pins and things like that. If you buy $10 worth of stickers, I will give you one of those custom envelopes. And I'll put something special in there for you. So just note that if anybody, if you want stuff, I mean, don't unnecessarily spend money, obviously, because we're budget bike shoppers. So, you know, use your budget where you need to use it first, first and foremost. But Pacific Cycle Schwinn, the same thing. So I, I don't know, but I would suspect we've seen that Mongoose has typically had the better full suspensions of Walmart bikes. So, I don't know. I would be really impressed if we saw a Schwinn because I am going to tell you, this is another video. I told you guys I've been doing all this footage. If you knew how many drives I have full of footage, I have to, my MacBook is so packed that I do my video editing on. I'm literally bringing in one project and transferring out because I have so much footage for each project. I'm really over filming because I have a lot of cameras now. So I'm trying to introduce new angles and it turns out when you're Shooting with four cameras where you used to use one, that really heads up on the gigabytes. But I, I really want you to know that I had forgotten where I was going because I looked right back at Carlos's. I looked at Carlos's sticker again and totally lost my, lost my train of thought. I'm like George Costanza's dad. I got a lot of problems with you people. And then he forgets, oh, I've lost my train of thought. So I know I was talking about Schwinn. I was talking about Mongoose. And the difference is, oh, it's back. It's back. If, if Schwinn were to do a full suspension, I would expect it to be absolutely amazing if it was done in line with the aluminum comp, with the axon, and with the boundary and tap. Because I can tell you, the boundary and the tap and the axon specifically, and of course the aluminum comp, but really, like the axon? I don't know how many of you have actually seen an Axum in person, but that is a whole new level. That, the ardor to me doesn't quite, just something about it. When you walk up and you look at it, you know, there's quality and then there's visual quality. I don't know if you know JD Power. JD Power ranks all these companies and most of the time that's a, you know, they get the highest rank of impression, first quality impression. Well, a lot of that's visual. If you look at their checklist, a lot of visual quality. People are like, yeah, that looks good. That's pretty good. That's yeah, good quality. But walking up, you walk up to an Axum, and it looks like something that I would expect to roll off of a bike shop floor. And I'm not exaggerating. 
I walk up to like the Schwinn Ascension, the Schwinn Ascension. Okay, bike, uh, pretty good bike. I'm gonna be tweaking on that too. I haven't really done much with the Ascension, but my first real new genera, the the first new generation target bike. But when I got the Ascension, it to me doesn't have the same appearance of quality that the boundary does, which is pretty much what it relates to. The boundary, it doesn't, not that it's lesser, it just doesn't have the same appearance. Now, one caveat to this is with all these new bikes, even new local bike shop bikes, I have been noticing that welds are getting sloppier and sloppier in appearance. Now, that's not to say they're any weaker. They just don't look as uniform or as, if they're smooth, they're not as smooth, things like that. And I think that's just a byproduct of all this demand and the limited supply chain right now. Nothing, in my opinion, that's coming out right now is as good of a visual quality as it was previous. I'm sure it'll get better again, but I really do think it's just because everything's getting rushed through. I really, that's what I think. But visual quality, so on the visual frame, if I could get a full suspension Schwinn, I'd be curious what they came out with, but I don't expect it. I think Mongo's kind of dominating that right now on the big box side. So let me go to chat really quick here, because we're 52 minutes into this, and I want to, I don't want to keep my, my mod here up too late. Hey, by the way, comment if you guys... I'm kind of thinking, I bought 500, well, me and my idiot neighbor, his term, he calls himself my idiot neighbor. So, me and the idiot neighbor bought, my idiot neighbor bought $558 worth of fireworks today. So, I was thinking maybe, since we got all this, some of this stuff looks pretty impressive. And I was thinking about maybe doing a Kev Central live stream on the 4th and showing our fireworks. So. Comment if you would like to see there, if you think it's a good idea. I'm, I'm starting to think, like, how would I frame this? Can you even see it at night? Because if you ever tried to film stars and stuff with your phone or with the camera, it doesn't work all that well. Schwinn can't be one-upped, mountain bike Keo. So you're, I, I'm assuming you're talking about like, with the axe and things the like that. The fireworks thing kind of answers Paradox with your monster question. I won't be chatting much because I'm eating, but what are you going to do for the fourth of July? Oh, okay, Paradox asking about the fourth. Let's see, when does everyone constantly seem surprised by his face? I, I didn't know, is there any comments about my ugly face? No, but there was one that I really thought was funny. Eugene Krabs, nice Eugene. face, and Sonja yeah. because he sounds like a 64 year old man, but he doesn't, but he is 65 <laughs> years old. That's that funny. Was... That's funny. Okay, so we've got Shuby Bikes here. I see that name. Support your local bike shop. Yeah, oh, okay, so that's going back. Oh, Timothy, this one I scrolled up. So thank you, Shuby Bikes, and thanks for being here. I, I remember your name from previous live streams. 27.2 dropper posts, any good? Why would they be bad? Do they work? Yeah. So if it works, why is it not good? So there you go. And I have three that I have purchased. I'm going to be testing out three different budget levels on dropper posts. Gonna be testing those out. You guys have no idea how much money I've spent in the last 30 days on bike parts. It is crazy. And I, I think I've got a good thing going on here with my, the way my ledge is coming together. I think I've got a good thing going on here, but anyone that's purchased, Gravity Zero pre-ordered an order, congratulations. Anyone that's purchased a ledge or a, an arter, an arter, a ledge, or an an arter. Oh, I'm just giving up on that. The two bikes, the two bikes here. If you have purchased those, have you con are you considering doing anything with the wheels? And if so, you know, wheels are tight supply right now, especially these wheels. And I'm gonna grab one that I'll lay off here to the side. And I wanna mention two things about the wheels. If you don't know this, the Axum has 2.60 tires. The Ledge and the Arter have 2.60 tires. The Axum rims are about 30 millimeters. So I thought that these would be 30 millimeters. These are not. I calipered these. I guess I put on my caliper. But I got 26 millimeters. 
when I calipered these. So they are not, yet they're still 2.60 tires, and I have the tires, one of the tires here. I was really surprised. I did not expect this. You know, these compass tires, uh, and by the way, this was 2.5 pounds, I think it was. This is the front wheel. And it was 2.5 pounds when I weighed it. I was shocked. I thought it would weigh considerably more. I bought some hubs that I've been playing around with, trying to relace, and then another set, because maybe I messed those up. But I bought some hubs, and, and by the way, I, I can't do that. I'm not a hub lacer. But they were as heavy as I think the hubs and uh, these wheels. But these compass tires, well, and I, if I had these on the trail, I think I have. Hope I don't get poison oak on me. But these compass tires, even with the tubes, not as, you know, they're not super lightweight, but they're not as heavy as 2.60. You're going to see in a video coming up, I bought some new tubeless ready 2.60 tires that were a deal too good to be true. And the local bike shop tried to sell me this same brand over the phone, 2.60 tires, when I bought something that you're going to see tomorrow. Give a little hint, uh, some of the things tomorrow. But, uh, and I, I bought what I think is the same ones for very cheap. And they told me, oh, it was a great deal. They were heavy, way heavier than these. And it, there's a tube in these, and I just had the tires of the others. So yeah, you gotta be careful, you know, with that. The weight of wheels, that adds up quick and makes a difference. It really does. It absolutely makes a difference. Let me get back to chat really quick. See, hey, Thio, how are you doing, buddy? A 140 millimeter travel voice going on either of the Mongoose bikes. Well, you may you may see something along those lines. You may. So stay tuned, my friends, stay tuned. Ryan Morota, Morata, Morata. Bike showing up on the website. Well, there's another one. Just look in the link in the descriptions. On the description of the video. And I don't know why people are surprised by my face. I'm surprised by it a lot, too. I have, I used to have a college professor. I think I may have told this story before. I had a college professor that always played up like he was super vain, but he was totally not. Awesome guy. I love this guy. And one day he walked in and he had a new tie. He kept playing with it a little bit. And some, I think someone commented or something about his tie. And, well, yes, it is a new tie. He's like, you know, because you'd always talk about how good looking he is and things that, he said, you know, I really contemplated not wearing this tie today because as I was walking by the mirror, I stopped and looked at myself in complete awe. And I thought, you know, this is really unfair to all my other coworkers that they have to compete with this. And I love that. And that's how awesome he is. I absolutely love it. And I used to play on it, too. He would walk in and, oh, you look stunning today, even more so than normal. Watch many of your, well, the man, I'm glad you watch my videos. You should keep watching my videos. Thank you so much. By the way, have you guys noticed, hey, Sonia, my friend Sonia, another patron, a long time patron. It's been a while since the last stream. Yes, it has. It's a lot to catch up, the beginning of this one. Well, as you know, you can always go back and rewatch. And plus, if I miss anything you say in here, I always go back and I read what everyone says later. So I'll see what you say. I'll see it. So be careful. Are wider tires better? Is that Jan? Is that Jan? Hmm. You know, that's a rider type thing. That's a rider thing because I enjoy a little bit wider and I enjoy playing on wide, wide. But there's a sweet spot for me, a definite sweet spot. And I'd say under three inches for me. The 2.60 is a really good sweet spot for me. But even then, when I hop back on my Comp V2, that has, I think it's 2.25, something like that. I'm like, oh, it's so, so easy. So easy. So they have their place. They have their place, but it's all rider preference. That's why there's so many different types of bikes, so many brands of bikes, so many different components. We all get our choice. We all get our choice. And that's, that's a good thing. 
So, hey, someone mentioned something about the XR, but thank you again, Sonia. I really do appreciate it. No bike bell to ring right now. I don't even have, I do have two e-bikes over here, but neither have a bell. One has a bunch of electronic gizmos, but no bell. You're going to see it coming up. Actually, an e-bike that I purchased from another YouTuber that it turns out, a pretty decent sized channel that lives about an hour from me. And I even tried to collab with them. When I was picking it up, I thought, well, I can, you know, do a collab video where I pick it up and talk about, oh, they weren't, didn't want anything to do with that. They don't want anything to do with that. I, I wonder if it's because it was a bike and I'm a bike guy. So, you know, if I did something with manufacturing water bottles and I didn't know much about it. And then someone that worked at the plant that manufactured the water bottles wanted to collab with me on that. I would be, uh, uh, I don't know. So maybe that. I don't know, but they're a really nice person. But we'll see. And they gave me a really good deal on the bike. So we'll see. But thank you again, Sonia. I really do appreciate that. And I saw, what's the longest crank arms upgrade that you can fit on these bikes? So you were talking to David F there, 2.3, 2.5, good sizes. And yeah, I like the 2.5 up front, 2.4 rear. That's a good, good combo. The longest crank arm that you can fit on these bikes, well, and they come with 170. I don't know why you would want to go with anything longer than that because you're going to run into pedal strike issues. Because on a full suspension, uh, on a full suspension bike, you know, you already have unless you really firm it up, you already have a little bit of bob. And you'd be amazed how half of an inch of sinking down when you're going over a mound if you, that you could normally pedal over, sometimes you get a little scrape. So, yeah, there's, there's that. But, I mean, someone has to go paradox. Well, thank you for sticking around. I'm going to, no more than 27 more minutes. No more than 27 more minutes. So I'm going to get back on track here. Just tell everyone, hey, I appreciate you being here in this live stream. And if you come later, thank you for watching. Watch the whole thing. Watch the whole thing and see a lot of, a lot of smart people here at Kev Central. As you can see in the chat, a lot of super smart people. And I want to give my moderator, my niece, a nod and a thank you because I thought, I'm looking over and I see her looking around at stuff and everything, especially this one bike that I'm sure she's already honed in on. But I didn't think she was doing anything. I thought, well, I hope she's looking at stuff. And she was making notes. They already made notes. So, yeah, thanks, thanks to her. I appreciate that. Uh, so, and I want to remind everyone again of that Mongoose, Mongoose blog that I have contributed to. Thank you again, Mongoose, for putting that on your site. You can go to the Mongoose website, look at the blog, and you'll see it there. I'm going to make a correlating video. But this is important stuff coming up, so you don't want to bail. You don't want to bail, because I'm about to make some reveals. I'm about to make some reveals, then I'm going to give away a bike. Before I make the reveal, though, I want to talk about one thing. Head tubes, and I'm going to need to see this. Okay, we know that this head tube now, for whatever reason, is different than the four Schwinn bikes that have a tapered head tube that introduced this into big box cycling. Remember how much how far we have come in, what is this? March, April, May, June, one year and four months. So in 16 months, wait, I just did math. I just did math. Oh, wait, language is major. In, in 16 months, we have went from the traditional old big box bike with pretty much 70 degree head tube angles and kind of funky sitting up like a Mack truck on all the 29er geometry with rare exception to what we have now. And that was all started with the Schwinn's and now we have these two new Mongoose bikes, but all of them, all four of those Schwinn bikes, technically six, that's, yeah, six, technically six. <laughs> it's so confusing at given numbers. Technically six bikes because you have the two new axles, the two new axle bikes, the 2021 axles with the sized frames are getting those now. I mean, how amazing is this? Knocking it out of the park. 
Sit cycle, Schwinn, Mongoose, knocking it out of the park. But then we got the ledge, and it has the same tapered head tube size as those other bikes. So you would think that this order would have the same tapered head tube as the Dutton and as Mountain Bike Geo pointed out, because he ripped that apart before I even did. Found out that that is a ZS 4455, 55 millimeter lower headset cup. But I want to mention I ordered a $50 lower headset. And then Mountain Bike Keo said, well, I ordered this cheap one. And I went out and looked at it and ordered it. And mm, is this the one that he ordered or is this the different one that I found? Did, Keo, did you get a risk? Is that the one you told me about, a risk? Because I got this risk headset and I want to mention something about this. I just ordered the 5560. 5640 version for future bikes because this comes usually they come kind of put together this one for whatever reason has quality control so i guess they took it out probably product return or something but you know you have it has an upper and a lower headset anytime you're looking at headsets and you see 44 55 like zs5640 is just a lower headset cup. It's just a lower headset cup. When you say see stuff like 4455, 4456, usually comes comes with the upper, which is the 44 part. But this one, there is. Let me find. Hey, wait a minute. Did they? Did they just short me? Oh my gosh! I have been I have been rooked. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm not missing. I am absolutely missing something. You guys just saw me open this. Yeah, this is a brand new. There's the packaging. Well, I can't show it. They ripped me off and didn't give me the lower headset cup. But what? I can still show you what I was going to show you. Normally, you get a lower headset cup that presses up into the bottom of the headset. You get a bearing that goes up into that. And in this case, a sealed bearing, not sealed bearing. And then you get the crown race that goes down onto the fork. And this bearing sits on the crown race and that goes up into the head tube, into the cup that you pressed in. This wrist set comes with a second smaller. And it is for standard fork, 28.6 millimeter crown race. So if I have a, I can use either a tapered fork or a standard fork and it goes right up in there and it sits in that bearing and still nicely moves around so pretty good with this risk headset that i unfortunately on this one i'm gonna have to send back because they didn't give me everything that explains the other one that i had didn't have any tape on it and this one was taped up and it said qc pass and I wonder, now I know that this is a product, you know, people buy stuff sometimes, take out the part they need and tape it up. I'm a victim of that. So there's that. So note that. But anyway, ZS55 on this thing. And if you want a cheap headset, just make sure you get, get one that's complete. But it's this, uh, this Risk brand. Uh, you're not going to be able to see that on on this camera also I, I know thio's here and i want to mention a lot of people he, he's a big advocate for alibaba and aliexpress i don't have a good relationship with alibaba and aliexpress simply because i've never caught those good deals that are always supposed to be there i never see them i see things sometimes that are a couple of bucks cheaper but it's going to take me a month month and a half to get it and i'm like well why wouldn't i spend the extra two bucks and get it in two days same product well, I want to mention, first, I'm going to shoot my moderator. Uh, I, brought, I brought a Nerf gun. Found it. Found it earlier. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it, that was the last one, but if you want to play around, well, we'll play, we'll play around with them later. But I want to mention something here. I was working, I had, I had the ardor. And I had one particular crank set in mind for it, the claw. 
and I ordered a claw off of AliExpress along with three other crank sets. And I want to mention this because you can, you know, technically get some good deals on AliExpress, although these weren't that much cheaper than what I could have bought them for, on, say, Amazon. But one good thing about AliExpress is you can get all kinds of colors that you don't typically get to see here, although now I'm starting to see those filter in onto Amazon. But I bought a claw in a beautiful color. And, oh, well, it's upside down. And I was all thrilled with this, and I went to put this on today because I had a theme plan that I was going to use on this bike. And the, if you've ever installed one of these, you'll know that there's a little small nut that you have to thread in here. It's called a capless nut or a fixing bolt for the crank set, and the other crank arm goes on here, and it pulls tension in. It pulls it in. This is a specific size that is not the Shimano typical Holotech size. Didn't get it. Instead, they sent me this as the accessory pack, which is the wrench for it. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight chain ring nuts or bolts and nut combos. Well, so, okay, four. That's just one set. One set of chain ring bolts and the wrench, but no little nut. And do you know how hard it is to find a pro wheel claw nut that fits this? Like to never found that. As a matter of fact, this one I kind of owe another crank set for this from someone. So just FYI, you got to be careful because that's overseas. If I would have bought this on Amazon, it would have been like this, where I'm shorted apart. I could send it back, have another one coming. But unfortunately, you can't do that. And I bought two IXF crank sets at the same time that I bought these. Oh, wow. Is that bottom bracket a different? No, it's not. At the same time that I bought these, I bought two IXF crank sets that were in a color that I didn't have. And you know, I haven't been able to use either one of those because the surface where the chain ring mounts up to, you know, chain ring bolts here, the surface is improperly manufactured on those other two. So the chain ring sits just askew enough. That, you know, you got to have a perfect bit of distance. Well, first, it mess up the chain line. But second, there's distance between the chains there and where the chain ring is moving around and an improperly manufactured crank arm that's too thick on one of the one of the arms or one of the mount point posts here causes that to move in two of them like that. So yeah, that's my problem. That and along with the fact of all those great bike deals I've never been able to find and I contacted a company on Alibaba Ooh, that's not my computer power off here. And I contacted one of the companies recently on Alibaba because Thio was talking about this great bike. And it was like 900 and some dollars shipping. And then when it got to the point, I wasn't even going to order it at that price, but I was just seeing how far down the rabbit hole I could go. Got to the point of where I would have been ordering it. And then they told me, oh, well, right now, due to demand, we're not doing one bike. So, yeah. So note that. I feel bad about that but here's some big big stuff are you ready how many of us are here 155 viewers it went up and that's a good thing it was 129 it's 155 now that's a good thing welcome I'm gonna try to wrap up quick but first I want to talk about some stuff so I don't know if you have noticed but when I've been talking about I'm just gonna hold up here mongoose when I've been talking about the two new mongoose bikes I have been saying X1 a lot. So you may be wondering, why does he keep saying X1? I know it's the name of the bike, but why is he emphasizing X1 so much? Well, that is because there is another bike. There is an X2. And I, I don't have any pictures. And I only have a printout here. Matter of fact, I'm going to fold because there's more bikes or more stuff on here 
But some of this stuff, I don't know where that stands, if it's just conceptual or if it's something that's going to happen or what. But I have a list here of specs straight from, straight from Mongoose. And it is the X1 versus the X2 Arter. So you're going to hear it right now. And that's why I, yeah, Keo's like X2. That's why I, under Keo earlier, you were talking about times two. Somebody had said something and I locked in on I'm like, wait a minute, wait a minute. So there is a Mongoose Arter X2 that will be coming. And I want to mention, and I, I got permission to say this because I didn't want to, I don't want to leak anything unfairly, but I'm just going to run down, you know, do this old school style. I'm going to run down the list and I want to just tell you the differences between it and the X1 Arter. So we're talking about the Arter, Mongoose Arter X2. So here we go. First time you're hearing it anywhere. Frank. On the X1, we've got an aluminum trouble lock frame with a tapered zero stack head tube and a replaceable derailleur hanger. Something about that derailleur hanger remind me, maybe in the next live stream, to talk about derailleur hangers between the ledge and the arter because there's a difference there. The X2 has the exact same frame information, so I can expect that the frames are roughly the same. Four. Element on the X1, element oversized trail bike, 100 millimeters of travel, really 80. Steel lower with alloy crown. So I've talked about that, and that was another thing. I don't know if you guys picked up on this, but when I was talking about the X1s, I mentioned steel lower. Did you did anybody notice that? That I've never mentioned that before on a fork, even on a big box fork, but on that specific one, I mentioned that it had a steel lower. Well, that is because the X2 has an element oversized trail bike, 100 millimeters of travel, so basically the same fork, but it has alloy lowers and crown. So the crown is alloy here, but the lower is steel weight. The X2 will be alloy, alloy weight savings. And these forks are heavy. I can't remember. My scales are somewhere, but I want to say this was seven point something pounds. And even a budget air fork that is not as light as a high end air fork are usually four, four and a half, four point three pounds, something like that. So potential weight savings there right out of the gate. Crank X1, we know we got a Pro Wheel 30 tooth narrow wide. We'll get a 30 tooth narrow wide, so same there. The chain is a different chain. We get a KMC on this bike. We have a KMC Z7. There's a Z8.1. That'll tell you something right there. Square taper bottom bracket. Pro Rush shifters, but a one by eight shifter. Eight speed shifter. So we're going to alloy lower on the fork. An eight speed chain, an eight speed shifter to go with the eight speed wide range 11 to 42 cassette on the Arter X2. A cassette, oh, thank you, because I have been struggling trying to figure out ways because wheels are so hard to get right now and so expensive. And I know because I'm, I'm not kidding when I'm talking about all, literally thousands of dollars by next week that I will be into wheels. Thousands in wheels and i really want to relace these with different hubs but to get this well this is a front but you get what i'm saying to get this but to have it as a cassette think of the doors that that is opening for us think of the doors and even going back in history now i'm looking back at the xr pro and i'm like that will had a cassette why did i buy a new wheel set <laughs> just use that i don't know Anyway, so we got the 8-speed, we get an 8-speed cassette, we get the clutch because it's pro, pro Rush. Okay, rims. This rim is alloy double wall, we know that, and you can see, oh well, let's see with that in the way. People ask me, is that really double wall? Yes, it's double wall. Double wall alloy. So you get alloy double wall with the new bike, but again, the rear one is going to be a cassette, not a freewheel, where this, what we have on these two bikes is freewheel. But you're also getting 
instead of the steel quick release front hub, this is heavy. Steel quick release hub, you know, big box hubs are always heavy. Although this not as light, or not as heavy as I thought it was going to be, but uh, the alloy quick release for the X2, but on the rear wheel for our X1s, you know, we got the bolt on, bolt on rear wheel. X2, alloy quick release for the rear wheel. So not only is it cassette, but it is also quick release, which makes sense because it's a cassette. So starting to get somewhere. Wheels or tires. Compass, a good prop. I didn't even realize that I had it over here. Uh, to or kept it over here and was going to use it this much. We know we got these new Compass 27.5 by 2.6. Kind of, I was I said they were rebrands of just cheap, but I don't know because they're not so heavy. But I see the WD. So anyway, we got our Compass there on the X2. We are getting WTB Ranger 2.6, 27.5 by 2.6. So still 27.5 by pedals. I have them down here, but you know the plastic mongoose pedals, actually polymer. With the polymer mongoose pedals platform, we're getting alloy platform pedals with the X2. Mechanical disc brakes, it just says dual disc brakes, so that means they're mechanical. LA brake levers, handlebars. Handlebars on both of these bikes are heavy. They're steel. They're 31.8, which is good. And you saw I left it on this bike for stage one. Because I was trying to do that ultra budget build. Gone now. It's when they're covered up. There was something else now. But these were steel bars. The X2 alloy oversized riser handlebars to go with the alloy A head stem. Probably the same stem, I would assume. Zero tack, zero, zero tack, zero stack tapered. So we can use the tapered fork. Seat post. On the ledge, we got alloy. But on the Arter, you know, that was a steel seat post. Now you get an alloy seat post on the X2. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. X2 KS dropper post. So it looks like, if I'm reading this properly, that the X2 comes with a dropper post. That's even better. Saddle Mountain Bike Sports so it'll be the standard, same. <laughs> it'll be the same. Same saddle, but I'm laughing here because it says extras. The extra for the X1 on their list here is the alloy kickstand. The extra for the Ardor is lock-on grips instead of slip-ons. So we don't get the honeycomb cheap slip-ons, which are fine. They're actually pretty good for slip-ons, but we get lock-on grips. That's pretty funny that it's kickstand, but then actual lock-on grips. And I can't mention this other thing. If this ever comes to fruition but if it does wow if you thought this is good wow but again this is just spec stuff for on this flip side here for if ever happens long way away and also let me go through my sheets here because let's see that's the dolomite i've already covered the dolomite yeah I want to mention, I've had a few people ask me about the XR Pro because, you know, the XR disappeared. It disappeared, but then it came back all of a sudden. And I will admit, I was a little apprehensive because I knew, I knew that this was coming. I didn't have it yet, but I knew it was coming. And I knew the specs on it. But then the XR Pro came available, and I know there were so many people lined up for the XR Pro. And I was a little hesitant. I was like, do I even list and let people know that the XR Pro is available? But I went ahead and I did anyway because the XR Pro out of the box is a different bike than this is out of the box. You know, it's got the cassette. It's, well, still heavy. But, I mean, the XR Pro, is, it still kind of holds its own in a way. It still holds its own. It was never, I've always mentioned this. It was never the bike for me. I just didn't feel everything. It just didn't line up for me. But the dozen or so people or more that have ridden it have all loved it. So especially in project form. So there's that. But I'm looking at their dual mountain bike, dual suspension mountain bike. And looking at the list that we have here. And I can't mention some of the things that I see here. 
which I don't know if they're going to be Walmart bikes or Mongoose bikes or if this is just conceptual bikes, but the XR Pro is on here. So I'm assuming that that means that the XR Pro is not going anywhere. And I'm wondering if that means I don't see anything on here about a, oh. They told me I could mention X2. And I've just went to another page here. So we got the XR Pro, but I am seeing a page here. They said I could mention the X2s. This is the Ledge X2. Are you ready for this? Ledge X1, 27.5. Ledge X2, 29. Frame, alloy, alloy, four bar. What can I say that? Still frame, so the same frame. Looks like it's got the alloy lowers on the four. It's got the eight speed with a cassette. It's got the alloy quick release on the rear. So basically the same thing as the Ardor X1, but that's the Ledge X2 and wow. There is more stuff that I'm looking at, but again, I think I'm getting into the conceptual stuff. So I'm just going to leave that off to the side, but there you have it, folks. Uh, Mongoose, not done. Not done. There are, are new, new X2s coming. So pay attention to that if you're in the market. Now, obviously, I don't know the pricing on this stuff, but obviously, if you start adding on alloy parts where there were steel parts, and you start adding on cassettes where there were free wheels, you know the price is going up. How much that goes up, I don't know. So, yeah, there you have it. Uh, are you happy you tuned in now? So we gained a little bit here, viewer-wise. Ooh, knocking over a fork. Which fork is this? Oh, I got grease on my ankle. No, oh, this is a this is an Axum fork. And I, yeah, there you go. Little comparison, quality-wise. Look at this. This is the element off the Ardor X1 and X2, and this is the axon. Can you see? I mean, you can, right? You can just see the quality. Of course, you can also see the chewed up bearing there. Wait, wrong one. Chewed up bearing there. But you can see the quality. Yeah, so, and this is an alloy lower. So I wonder if that alloy lower is more in the line with this. And also, look at this. Do you see, uh, line it up here. Do you see how much difference? It doesn't show up on camera. But the stanchion length difference, this is a 100 millimeter travel fork. This is supposed to be a 100 millimeter travel fork. So it'd be cool if we got something like this. You know, because this is actually, I mentioned this when I first got the Axums out, that you could actually make this an, an as-needed trail bike, as long as you kept it within reason, with this fork, because not that bad. It's not that bad. These, I wouldn't want to push too hard on the trail. I don't know, but they're not that bad. They're, even, they're better than we've had. Better than nothing. But, oh, by the way, the bearings on both the Ardor and the Ledge were perfectly intact. So, oh, and that women's aluminum comp, also perfectly intact, the upper headset bearing. So it looks like they fix that quality control issue where we're getting those taper, the bearings for the tapered head tubes that were all mushed up like this one. That looks like that's a gone thing. So what do you guys think? Let me look because I just want to see the comments here. It's too hot. Converted a real well on my order to quick release. Gilberto, congratulations. Did you use. Man, I got so much stuff here. Did you use. Oh, where to. The... Oh, here it is. Right in front of me. Did you use something like this? One of these little kits where you can convert. A solid axle, I can't even get this wrapping off. Convert a solid axle to a quick release? Is that what you used? Something like that? Probably. 
Uh, probably so. Now note, you know, there's different stresses on a free will, as somebody's pointed out, especially these wider range free wills. So, well, seven, we still have seven speed, so that's when you get up to those eight speed ones, and there's more outer stress and a hollow axle. You gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. But, I mean, look here. How'd you do it? Uh, oh, I was asking him, I did that. So, it looks like lots of interest. Here in the X2, I'll wait for the ledge X2. Well, you know, we'll tell you this, uh, Paul Mark, oh yeah, oh yeah. Uh, if you want an X1 and you see one, and remember I clicked those soul. So don't pass over something if you don't know you can get the other. I don't know how, I'm imagining everything's gonna sell fast. So, do you know if any of those frames accommodate a dropper post being 27 millimeter? 27.2 is the dropper post size for both of these bikes. So, there's that. When will the Ardor X2 come out? I, I just know, I just know it's coming. I don't know any dates. Uh, I don't, it's not like in a week or anything, I don't think. Type in the chat. Different frame sizes. I didn't see frame size. I didn't see frame size mentioned. So I'm assuming, I'm assuming the 27.5s will be the same frame size as these. And I don't know about that 29. So we'll see about that. And there we go. I'm caught up on chat. So big news there, right? Big big news. And I'm two minutes over. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap this up. Oh, a little bug, little ant. I won't kill it. She likes ants. Uh, I'll leave it, but I want to now, and I don't think this is going to work. Can you guys see anything? I don't think you can see a graphic. Let's see if I've got this hidden. No, that's the slide. Let me see. No, the giveaway's supposed to be there. Anyway, let me roll this bike over here. I've got so much stuff stacked in my way. I'm gonna, I need you guys' help with this. I have... And I'm going to rip out these two pages. Right, rip them out. These, these are all the people that met all of the qualifications for the Instagram bike giveaway. They did everything they were supposed to do. I'm going to hand this over to my moderator here. And I'm going to grab this bike. Okay. I'm going to grab this bike. Do you remember this? Do you remember the Embark from Cycle Kids? Probably not the best name for an adult bike, but I get what they're doing. A bike brand for every stage of life. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. This is a decent little bike. Kind of an urban assault bike in a way. Very Raleigh, whatever the Raleigh was, I forgot the name of it, uh, that I really liked. That had the orange fork. Uh, very nice little bike. One by alloy handlebars, lightweight. Not, not very heavy comparatively. But I'm giving this away. So I want you guys, what's the numbers? What's the last number on the second sheet? It is okay, 1 to 81. And I jumbled those up so somebody couldn't just go down the list on Instagram and go, oh, well, this is number 80, so I'm going to say that. I jumbled them up. So what I want you to do is pick a number between 1 and 81. And I'm going to let this go for, say, one minute. And I'm going to see how many people pick the same number. So just randomly throw out, and if people don't pick the same number, if we don't have a consensus of the same number, then I'll just randomly pick one out of whatever you guys pick. But that makes this totally random. No way to fake this, no way to do anything like that. I just have a number for every person, and I'm going to show the list, and we'll pick that number. So I'm seeing 69, 47, 27, 54, 71, 42... 71, 21. There's a couple of 360s, so that's in the lead right now. We've got about 30 seconds. 
I see some threes there. Another 69. Another 60. 60. So 60 still in the lead. Still in the lead. Oh, look at everyone going there. So 69, 40, another 60, another 54. Wow, you guys, I appreciate the involvement here. And whoever's going to win this, all right, we're going down. Five, four, another 60, three, another 60. There's 600, that's supposed to be 60. One, another, so 60 wins it for sure. Hand me the list here. Get this bike down. Okay. So, still going. All right, so you, you can quit putting in the numbers now. Well, so there's, there's about a 30 second delay. Oh. So 60 clearly, even in the numbers that are going. So who was 60? 60 was Lorenzo Gonzalez 15. Right here at 60, Lorenzo Gonzalez 15. Congratulations. And another super chat here. Congratulations. Hey, and James Wasco's here. James, his wife, I believe Judy, and your wife, very nice people. Talk with them regularly. Thank you for being here. And thank you for the sticker. I like your sticker. Lou Grubb, thank you so much. So, Lorenzo Gonzalez, 15. As mentioned in the rules for the bike, you need to contact me. I will contact you on Instagram, and then we'll arrange for you to be able to arrange the shipping. I could drop this off at the UPS store, and you can get your bike. So congratulations to Lorenzo Gonzalez, 15. And of course, I'm 15, you know, I just want to make sure you're supposed to be 18 to enter. So make sure your parents, uh, if you are a 15 year old, I'm assuming you're not. Some people just put things in there, but you need to be 18. So make sure that your parents would claim the bike. So, or you be an adult, preferably. So there we go. Yeah, congratulations, number 60, which is Lorenzo Gonzalez, 15. So there we go. Gave away a bike, and I'm going to do one more bike. One more bike. Had three bikes in three months, and I'm a few days late, so it's kind of stretching into a month and a half, But because uh, I was waiting on this live stream to do it. But yeah, and, and got a decent bike. I mean, I think this is a 17-inch frame. This will pop up out of the way. Windows. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so pretty decent little bike that somebody's picking up. We can't even get these anymore. We can't even get them. I mean, it's a good bike. Good bike. So, congratulations, Lorenzo. Let me roll this out of the way. Here, good. Just thinking. There we go. Yeah. So pretty awesome there, and I appreciate it. Uh, it's a regular. <laughs> yeah, no, I tried to think. I was going to do the random. Let me get this off the screen, this little overlay. I was going to do the, the randomizer thing, but Instagram, it turns out, kind of stinks. In my, I'm not a big fan of Instagram. I, I, I've had an Instagram account where I just go and look for, for photos. It's great. But everyone does giveaways on Instagram, and... I don't know, it seems like it's less regulated than YouTube, but at the same time, I just don't think it's as well done. Personally, I, it's hard. Even the randomizer, the random picker, what I'm getting to, the random picker on YouTube, I've, I've got my camera screen up, right? Yeah. On YouTube, you know, you can go and pop in the URL for your channel if you did a giveaway with comments. And it would filter through those. You could even put keywords and things like that in it. For Instagram, it was a whole, I had to jump through all these hoops. And, you know, log in with your Instagram account on a separate site. So, yeah, no, not for me. So I just started thinking, I'll just write down everyone that qualified. And then let people randomly pick a number, assign everyone a number. And there you go. So Lorenzo got it. Second bike. And I'm still trying to figure out what is going to be the next bike. I have an idea. I have an idea, and I think it's it's going to be a good. One. And I think people are going to like this. See if I decide to do that bike, I think we'll see. So my yeah, I got a haircut. I finally got it cut. It's all messed up right now, wearing a hat because it is baking hot outside, and I was sweating to death, running back and forth carrying stuff down here. And yeah, my Instagram 
is Kev Central Official is the Instagram. If you want to go join that. And the way I do these giveaways, you have, you're responsible for the shipping to get the bike to you. I will drop it off at a UPS store and you can arrange with them to get it. Or if you are close enough and local, I'll, I'll meet you somewhere. I'll even drive an hour or so away and meet you somewhere to get the bike. So that's, that's the way that I do the giveaways, but you do have to follow the rules. You have to be subscribed to me on YouTube. The biggie though, you have to follow me on Instagram. That's easy to track. Follow on Instagram, comment, like, share, and a keyword. I usually put a keyword that you need to include in your comment. And that's what filters out a lot of the people, because uh, a lot of people just jump in. I see a buddy there messaging on that actually has one of the bikes that was viewed here on Kev Central, but there we go. That pretty much is it for tonight. Went about 10 minutes over, but thank you to everyone for being here. Thank you for the super chatters. Thank you. Yeah, Keo, what was my number? Well, I don't know what your name is on Instagram, Keo. To tell you what your number is, I didn't see your, I don't remember right now, Mountain Bike Keo, tell you that. But it could have because I was writing on so much stuff here. But anyway, thank you guys so much. I really appreciate you being here on Kev Central. Maybe the next live stream, I'm not going to do them every week because I didn't want to get to the point where I was just trying to scramble for content, just yap about stuff. I like to go into it with some content. But it sounds like we're going to have a lot more content coming up. You know, the X's. The X's. So stay tuned for that. I'm glad that you guys got to hear it first. You got to hear it first because you are live streamers here on Kev Central. You guys are kind of getting to that core of the core, and I really do appreciate you. And I do want to mention again, I have the shop link on my website. All that generates a little bit of revenue that helps Kev Central because I'm trying to get the RV and I'm trying to do all these all these upgrades. And I have big plans now that I'm vaccinated. Everyone that I hang out with, at least is back at the bike shop, they're all vaccinated. So <laughs> thank you. At the bike shop, they're all vaccinated. So that's good. But future is starting to look better for us. And obviously, with some of these bikes that we're getting and that we already have. I'm going to wrap it up here and look forward to the next one. We'll see when it is. I may live stream fireworks if I can figure out how to do that. If you think it would be a good idea. Someone did we'll have see. a question. Okay, hold on. Urgent. One question. Okay. Uh, can someone help with a upgrade question for a Stratus MC200? MC200. That's a brake set. Someone help upgrade question for my. Oh, I don't know what the MT200 is. Trick. I don't know that model. So I'm sorry. Can't help you there. Contact me on my website. Maybe send me information about it. And I'll I'll tell you what I. What I can find out about it. But thank you guys. The future is looking hot. 1A, it's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. So thank you again. I'm going to end this live stream and I have that. Oh, wait, I can use this screen for a second.